Hi everyone, Daniel Ashfield here. Today I'm going to review a 2018 Land Rover Discovery 5. And there's something a little bit special about this one. It's mine. Before I review this car, I want to talk about my decision to buy this car because I did look at a number of alternatives like a G-Wagon, a Volkswagen Amarok, uh, the new Mercedes pickup, a Q7, everything in that sort of range. And I ended up at a Land Rover Discovery and I'll tell you why. So I only have one car and I needed something that was a fantastic all-rounder, something that I could use in the week to go off-road, to pull diggers, to pull dumpers, something that's comfortable driving around and then hopefully give it a wash at the weekend and it looked pretty decent. I found that this Land Rover Discovery was the best all-rounder for a number of reasons. Legroom. I'm six foot five and I need plenty of space so I'm comfortable when I'm driving around because I spend a lot of time in the car. So as you can see, I can move my legs around freely and I can get in and out. Space. I need a lot of space for storage in my boot. There are a lot of things I need to carry around on a daily basis, like hard hats, boots, jackets, trousers, umbrellas, bags and stuff like that. And it's essential for me to have a big boot. And if I want to, I can pull all of this out and I can put about 20 or 30 bags of cement in here also. I have gone for the cage to protect anybody sitting in the back. So if I put my foot on the brake and the car jerks forward, everything won't fall into the back. So in these waterproof compartments, I can store anything which I take off me, which is wet. So if I'm out in the rain, I've actually got Wellingtons in here. I've got my snap-on boots. Also within the boot, an electronic detachable towing eye. This is perfect for me. I've only got one car and I'd like to use it in my private life and also for work. So detaching this is ideal because I don't particularly fancy going to see friends and having a meal with a towing bar sticking out the back of my car. So it's actually relatively easy to do. So have a fiddle in the back and pull out this cap. You slide the key into here and you insert. <laughs> I didn't wait it work first time. I'm going to need you to do cuts here, yeah? Just like that. So from a price point of view, I specced up a Range Rover Vogue, I specced up a Q7, I specced up a G-Wagon, I specced up a couple of other vehicles, and this one was actually the cheapest of all of them. But you could argue that they're in a different bracket. As you can see, unlike a lot of people who own these cars, I actually use mine as a genuine 4x4. I actually got it this dirty, driving around the yard on a rainy day. And I'd like to point out that this has been into Land Rover for the service and they didn't have the decency to clean it for me. This is a three litre, 258 brake horsepower. Now she's not fast by any stretch of the imagination, but man can she pull. Finally on the engine, when I was buying this, I asked Land Rover if they had any plans to upgrade the engine. And I was told that for this product's entire life, it would never be done. Two months later, they brought it out with 300 brake. Thank you for stitching me up, Land Rover. It's a HSC Luxury with an eight-speed gearbox. It's got the black pack. It's got sunroof, 22-inch wheels, rubber floor mats, heated and cooled leather seats, TVs in the headrest, lots of storage compartments, rear fridge, windscreen projection display, sat nav, reverse camera. So what I want to talk about is the alterations that I've done to the car. Since the beginning of time, Discoveries have all had an off-center plate. Forgive me, but because of my OCD, looking at it every day, I had to center it. So I've added this rear bumper with placebo exhaust. It doesn't actually do anything to the performance of the car, but for me, aesthetically, it looked a lot better. At the front of the car, I've also added this trim, just for me, because it makes it look a bit more sporty. On the bonnet and the boot, I've replaced the Discovery letters with Asheville, because we brand everything. I painted the brake calipers yellow, just to keep in with the whole Asheville black and yellow theme. All over the car, I've replaced the traditional Land Rover green badges with black ones. I've added these air vents to the front bonnet, because again, I think it makes it look a bit more sporty. So this vehicle is actually black. What you can see is a wrap. This was done to coincide with the launch of our new website, aggregatesupplier.com. It was done by a good friend of mine, Yanni at Yanni Mice. So the concept behind it was all our lorries are black and yellow, if anyone's ever seen them. And aggregatesupplier.com was the other way around, which was yellow and black. So I thought to myself, I'll wrap the car the other way around to coincide with the release of aggregatesupplier.com. Now, generally, when I review a vehicle, I take it on the road and I let you know how it handles. Well, this is an off-road vehicle, so we're gonna take it off-road. So this is what 8,000 tons of Type 1 looks like. We've used a loading shovel and the digger to make ourselves a ramp of about 45 degrees. 
We're gonna drive along the top and we have an even steeper ramp to get down on the other side. Let's see how she handles. First thing I'm gonna do is raise my suspension. So what I'm gonna do now is change my terrain settings to grass and gravel. Let's do this. You ready? Oh, Jesus, I can't see where I'm going. Oh, I'm stuck. Right, we're gonna have to roll backwards. I am stuck. I'm gonna have to roll backwards gently. And I think I'm just, can't actually stop because I'm sliding. Well, that didn't exactly go according to plan. The trouble is when you go to up here, you can't see anything in front of you. So what I'm gonna do is reverse and get a little bit more of a run up. Can't believe it, I got stuck. Right, let's reverse a little bit more. Give myself a little bit more power. Let's do it. Oh, come on. Yes, we're up. <laughs> we're up. <laughs> I got stuck. So now I'm gonna make my way down. The trouble is, I can't actually see where I'm going. Do you know what? I'm gonna get out and have a look. I can't actually see where I'm going because it's so steep, I can't see where I'm going, so I've got to take a look. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> Let's do it. Right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna reverse up a bit, because I can't see anything. If I can. And I'm gonna change my settings, and I am gonna change it for a heel hold, because I'm going down. I'm gonna change it for a heel hold, so let's see how we get down. Let's see, really, the car should break, the car should break for me. So let's see how we get on. I can't actually see what I'm doing. Whoa! Jesus, it's like being on a roller coaster. Oh! Oh! Come on. Oh! Jesus, okay. Oh! I can hear my parking sensors going off in front. And we are clear, we made it! <laughs> That's cool, I love doing that. So for me, the Land Rover Discovery 5 is a winner. Compared to the others in its class, it's very well priced. It's got great fuel efficiency. It looks nice on the weekend and for work. When pulling equipment behind, it's very powerful. When you order new, you can order loads of little mods and cons what make it perfect for the job that you want it to do. I would like it to be a little bit faster, but you could argue that's not what the car's for. Thanks for watching and let us know what you'd like us to review next.
Click here for the Asheville website. Click here for the Asheville channel. Click here to see a review playlist and click here to see this car in a tug of war on Carwell.